how bad is the storage situation for nat gas in Germany? I, I heard it was under 5% of normal levels. Uh, well, thank you very much for the invitation to join you, Brian. It's great to be on the show. This is a serious situation. Uh, European gas uh, storage levels and German gas storage levels in particular are below historical levels. They're well below average. They're below minimum levels. Um, so this is a matter of concern. It's a matter of great concern that's rattling the market. But I should say, and it's really important to emphasize, you know, we're already now getting close to the middle of February. So the end of winter begins to be in sight. And as soon as the market can see an end of winter, that will provide some relief, I would say. Yeah, the weather is so key here because it drives Absolutely. so much demand. The weather getting colder, it gives Putin more power because Gazprom, which is ostensibly an arm of Putin's empire, can kind of adjust those flows. If we see some kind of invasion into Ukraine, if the worst case scenario happens, is the rest of Europe pretty much neutered, Michael? Why would Germany do anything when they don't have a strategic interest in Ukraine, but they have a strategic interest in their own citizens not freezing to death? Well, first of all, I think it's worth just bearing in mind that we here in Europe are suffering very high gas prices. That's been the case for almost oh, six yeah. months now. Um, gas, international gas prices are five, six, seven times the level of gas prices in the United States. And that's being felt by power stations, by industry immediately. Uh, private consumers have been somewhat protected, but those prices are beginning to make their way through now into the bills that we all receive on a monthly basis. Um, so this, this is a very intense, very intense situation. But I think uh, any cutoff, of gas through the Ukrainian corridor is manageable. And I think it's really important to understand that the importance of the Ukrainian corridor as a way of feeding gas from Russia to Europe has actually been declining over the last 20 years, um, year after year, as we look for other, other routes of supplying Russian gas and, of course, other sources besides Russian gas coming into Europe. So there are many other alternatives. And with all due respect to our president, President Biden saying that basically he will end the Nord Stream 2 pipeline. For our viewers that are not familiar with this, just a reminder, it is a massive pipeline that comes from Russia to the northern part of Germany. It is an addition to the current pipeline they have. It's already built. It is yes. not just operational right now. Putin is desperate to get that going, and this may be part of why he's playing games in Ukraine. D does, the, does the United States... Or anybody, Michael, besides Germany, have the power, with all due respect to our president, to stop the pipeline? What are we going to do, blow it up? I don't know what our options honestly may be there. Yeah, so as you say, I mean, this pipeline is built and it's actually ready to go, but it does need to go through a regulatory process. Yeah, all parties are, it's not formally authorized yet to go. So that's going through a regulatory process that's expected to take another six months or so. So this has no direct impact today. Um, but of course, the argument has great uh, uh, implications for how we see the relationships between Germany and Russia and between the wider European uh, and Russian market. And it will be very important as we think about how to prepare for the coming winter. But all parties at this side, you know, are concerned to respect yeah. business and contractual law here. Yeah, one year. And we've covered it, Michael, extensively on this program. We went to the UK in November. We talked about it one year ago. Spot natural gas prices were at 18 equivalent dollars. They're now at 80. Very quickly, do you see this being a short term or a long term thing? Well, of course, it, it does depend on how events in on the Ukraine border and between Russia and Ukraine pan out. But I think the underlying point is that those low storage levels you, men you mentioned at the beginning, those very low gas storage levels, they're yeah. going to be with us for a long time. It's going to be a long a mountain to climb to rebuild those stock levels under any scenario.